Within our unit 6, we are talking about methods and functions. So far, we have often used this term method and functions and uh, what is actually the difference. Within this week, we talked about function, so it's time to really emphasize on the differences between those two. To handle complexity in programming, several different programming paradigms have been developed. Two of those are procedural programming and object-oriented programming. Both paradigms are actually supported within Python. So what is procedural programming all about? This is what we call functions. Yeah, so you decompose a complete complex pro uh, problem and uh, you do not have one program, but you have functions which are combined to make everything working and going. So functions are actually um, an answer or something which goes back to procedural programming. When it comes to object-oriented programming, you have objects and these objects always contain data and methods. And actually these methods are doing something with these objects. So they have a little bit of flavor of functions as well. However, one important difference is a method can only be executed, can only be invoked together with these objects. So you cannot just call a, a, a method, you can only call an object and the function on top. And you do it by calling the object name, followed by a dot and followed by a method name. Let's dig into the, into the notebook and uh, let's have some concrete examples to see the differences. So let's first start with a well-known function. You can have seen this print function before. We define a variable, we assign a value to it. We have now two parameters in our print function. The first one is a constant listening to, the second one is a song, and the output is, no surprise, listening to Blue Train. Important, we can simply use this function and print it in, in, in here and, and run it by simply putting it uh, as a statement. Now let's focus on methods. Yeah? Methods are always come together with the object. And one object could be a string. For example, in here we have this variable song where we assign some value of the data type string. So song is a string variable right now. And for strings, we do have certain methods like the method upper. Upper is changing all characters into capital, into upper ones. Yeah? So if you run this cell, you can see we have this ace of spades with mixed characters uh, assigned to song. And we have the print output where all these letters are turned up. And very important, you can only run uh, as upper is a method, you can only execute this upper method together with the object. Yeah, you have to write song.upper. Yeah, if you try to run upper song, yeah, then you get an uh, error message, which is name, the function upper is not defined. It's not known to this program. It's simply not available. Yeah, so upper is the method and it can only be used like that. Of course, methods can become more complex. So you can, for example, pass parameters to it. In here we have another method, a method split. Split is doing the following. It's again a method which works on string. You can define a so-called delimiter. In here it is comma followed by a space. And then the string is search in within this string um, it's searched for where do we have this um, comma uh, space where we do have where do we have this delimiter and here 
um, certain substrings are created. So the complete string is split up at this delimiter and all these substrings are then put into a list. So you have, um, you have a method which works on strings, but the output is a list, as you can see in here. Yeah, so this list is now used in a for loop and you can listen to all of these songs. When it comes to functions, we already discussed that you are able to nest functions. That means you have an inner function and outer function. The inner function is executed first. The output of the inner function is used as the input to the outer function and so on and so on. Nesting is not possible with methods, but there is something very similar, which is chaining. So what you can see here is we have songs.upper.split. Yeah, so what is actually happening here? Songs again is our list of songs we have had before. It is a string and now we run the upper method on this object, on this string, meaning we turn each and every um, character up into a uh, capital character. The output is still a string and uh, so we can put another method on top which works on string, split, uh, which creates as an output then the list. So if we let's run it, yeah, you see we have a list of strings and all these strings are pure upper strings, only use upper characters. So chaining method is something which is very similar to nesting functions. So what have you learned? Actually, we did not go into the details of object-oriented programming, but we have shown that there is a difference between method and functions. They have things which are quite common, they do some things. However, there is an important difference.